BusyBox's expert information on nutrition and vitamin supplements. What are the basics of a good supplement program? The basic building blocks of a good supplement program are always three. First, a high strength multivitamin and mineral. Now you can never get enough in one pill, so all the best ones will say take two or twice a day. You can't get enough vitamin C into a multivitamin. Uh, you need about a gram, which is you know, already quite big. So multivitamin plus additional vitamin C. And then thirdly, an essential fat supplement. Now these are oils, so they come in capsules. So multi, vitamin C, essential fats. What is optimum health? At the Institute for Optimum Nutrition, our criteria of optimum health is one, good psychological health. You have a sharp mind, good IQ, good mood, good motivation. Um, two, good physical health. You can climb a mountain um, or at least the stairs. Um, good biochemical health. In other words, things like your cholesterol level or your homocysteine level or your blood pressure are all in the healthy uh, parameter. Um, freedom from uh, symptoms and signs of ill health, i.e. you don't get digestive problems, headaches uh, or, or PMS if you're a woman. And lastly, to have all of that for as long as possible. So we study the longest living people to see what their secrets are. What are free radicals? Whenever you burn anything, you make a kind of toxin or exhaust fume which is called a, a free radical. Uh, it's also called an oxidant. Technically, it's a free oxidizing radical. And this is very much like a spark from a fire. And what happens is that spark, that free radical, can actually damage your cells. And it sets off a chain reaction whereby uh, molecules that make up our cells get damaged. And you have to put out a free radical in the same way that you would put out a fire. And our body's firefighters are called antioxidants, which are very, very high, for example, in fruits and vegetables. What is the purpose of supplementing? The purpose of supplementing is to achieve the optimum intake, uh, given that you are already eating some nutrients from food. And there are certain hallmarks that can tell whether, for example, the multivitamin you're buying is really worth it. So one is the mineral zinc. Uh, you need about 10 milligrams. That's a basic. In terms of vitamins, vitamin D, uh, you need about 15 micrograms. We just don't get enough because vitamin D is made in the skin in the presence of sunlight. Also, the B vitamins, uh, these make a big difference to energy, and you're probably looking at something like 25 milligrams for most of the major Bs. So those three yardsticks can really tell you whether it's a good supplement or not. Who should I see about a vitamin supplement program? The best way to find out exactly what you need uh, is either to go and see a nutritional therapist. And uh, in, in Britain, we have the British Association of Nutritional Therapists. On my website, patrickolford.com, you also have a directory. Um, or uh, to do an online program, again, on my website, where you put in all your details and it actually works out what you need. What is RDA and will I be healthy if I follow it? The RDA, um, which is what you read on the Cornflex packet, which I call the Ridiculous Dietary Arbitraries, it's actually the recommended daily amount, is the amount that you need to prevent scurvy, beriberi, marasmus, quashicorn, rickets. So it's good to achieve it, uh, but it is not the optimum level. So if you want to be an average poor health, then eat a diet that provides only the RDAs. What are essential fatty acids? There are two kinds of fats we have to have. They are called essential fats. And one family is called omega-6 fats. And they come from the oils of seeds that grow in a hot climate. So for example, a sesame seed or sunflower seed, this is omega-6. Now the other family is called omega-3 fats, and they come from a cold climate. So for example, flax seeds or walnuts would contain more omega-3. But the most powerful omega-3 come from cold water fish, and specifically fish that eat fish. So what happens is the cold water plankton contains the basic omega-3. Little fish eat it. They start to accumulate it. Fish with teeth, like mackerel, salmon, uh, they eat the little fish. So they're absolutely packed full of omega-3s. 
What are the benefits of omega-3 and omega-6? We need both omega-3 and 6. Uh, in our culture, in our diet, we tend to get more omega-6 than omega-3. So omega-3 is, is what we're lacking the most. They are very, very important for your heart function. They're important for the brain. Uh, so, for example, they improve um, attention deficit in children. Uh, they're very potent antidepressants and very potent anti-inflammatories, which means they're, they're painkillers. So omega-3s are brilliant all round, and there's no question that we just don't get enough. What are antioxidants? Basically, we run on sugar, glucose, carbohydrate from plants, and the process of, of burning carbohydrate for energy inside our cells creates exhaust fumes. And uh, those exhaust fumes we call oxidants or free radicals. Anything you burn, be it a cigarette or breathing in burnt petrol exhaust fumes, creates these oxidants or free radicals. And ultimately, they are what damage you and damage your cells and make you age. Antioxidants are the antidote. And these are generally found in fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds. Nutrients like vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, selenium, zinc. All of these are really anti-aging antioxidants. What foods contain antioxidants? The best foods for antioxidants are, are always fresh foods. So good food goes off, and the trick is to eat it before it does. Uh, there, because we need a range of antioxidants, that range of effect is illustrated by color. So you want to have something blue-purple, and this would be berries, red grapes, uh, for example. You want to have something red, like tomatoes or watermelon, um, orange like carrots, sweet potato, butternut squash, yellow, the very strong yellow colors like turmeric or mustard, and also dark green, so kale and, uh, and broccoli and foods like that. And eating a, eating a rainbow diet gives you the most potent antioxidant spread. What are superfoods? The term superfood really relates to a food that ticks a lot of boxes. So, uh, for example, you could take something like ginger. It's a very powerful anti-inflammatory, helps to reduce uh, symptoms in hay fever, arthritis, and so on. So, you know, we can think of things like salmon, rich in omega-3, as a superfood, ginger as a superfood, garlic as a superfood, uh, all the blue berries, such as blueberries, are superfoods because they're just so high in antioxidants. So it's really that sort of class A foods, you know, is superfoods. Is milk good for me? If I told you I was 51 years old and was still breastfeeding from another species of animal, you probably would think I was weird. Now, I actually don't drink milk, and the reason I don't drink milk uh, is because it clearly is not part of our evolutionary design to have as an adult. Of course, it's important in early infancy. And what we now know is that uh, a lot of milk as an adult uh, actually makes any cancer cells, particularly breast and prostate cancer cells, grow. So it's one of those uh, uh, established facts that's so poorly communicated, but the fact of the matter is there is a fraction of the risk of cancers such as breast cancer in countries that do not consume milk. So in rural China, for example, the risk is one in 9,000 among women, and in Britain it's about one in nine. So milk itself is not an essential part of our diet. Definitely shouldn't be a staple food uh, for a number of reasons. However, the nutrients in milk, such as calcium, protein, vitamin D, and zinc, they are essential, but you can get them from other foods. For example, nuts and seeds, and eating fish in the case of, of protein and vitamin D. Can I get all the nutrients I need through my diet? If you really look at Homo sapiens as a species, it's pretty well impossible to achieve um, what our jungle-dwelling ancestors would have consumed just from diet. To give you an example, a, a gorilla will eat you know, something like two grams of vitamin C, which is 44 supermarket oranges. So gorillas in, in, uh, in uh, captivity, which is probably how we are really, are given two grams of vitamin C. So there are certain nutrients that is very hard to achieve. But on top of that, we are exposed to a vast amount of anti-nutrients. So for example, if you do live in the city and you're exposed to more pollutants, 
um, then as a consequence you need more antioxidants. So there are a number of factors that make me believe that we're better off eating as good a diet as you can and then topping it up with supplements. Why does a good diet not contain all the nutrients I need? The nutrient content of a food um, is first limited by the nutrient content of the soil. And uh, basically our soils have become very nutrient and mineral eroded. And the reason for that is, is quite simple. And that is that by using artificial fertilizers to maximize food growth, um, plants just don't have to put down their deep roots. And those roots should become part of the compost, which then feeds nutrients back into the soil. So unless we really take care of the outer skin of the planet, which is the soil, by using organic farming practices, we're not going to enrich the soil. And if we don't do that, we don't enrich the plants. And consequently, our health suffers. Should I take supplements every day? I think supplements are a bit like clothes, in the sense that they're they're made out of natural ingredients. They're made out of the nutrients that are part of our evolution. Um, they're not strictly natural in the sense they don't grow on trees. Uh, but we are learning they have more and more and more benefits, both in terms of prevention of disease, but also increased energy, mental um, alertness, and so on. So I think in the future, everyone will be wearing them. What constitutes a well-balanced diet? The first thing is that most people think they are eating a well-balanced diet. And, uh, and when, you, when you actually explain what that means, then they realize that they aren't. So a well-balanced diet probably means six or seven servings of fruit and veg a day. That could be fruit with your breakfast, two pieces of fruit as a snack, and half of every main meal is vegetables. That's two servings per main meal. That's seven, so that's good. It means eating whole foods, i.e. foods you could pull out of the tree or out of the ground. And particularly in relation to the British diet, more nuts, seeds, beans, pulses. Um, any food you plant in the ground and grows is not only very rich in protein, but it's going to be very, very rich in nutrients. Uh, probably more fish because of the omega-3s than meat. But there's nothing wrong with meat as long as it's fit meat. And fit meat is meat that's hard to catch. Uh, a wild animal has 5% of its body weight as fat. Most modern animals, it's more like 30%. Uh, so whole grains, fresh fruit and vegetables, some fish, egg, maybe a little dairy products but not a lot, meat, and some source of essential fats from nuts, seeds and oils. That's a well-balanced diet. Is eating meat bad for me? There's a very big association between red meat and cancer. Uh, so there's no question that people who eat a lot of red meat do generally have worse health, higher rates of cancer and also heart disease. But it may not necessarily be um, red meat's fault, but rather that most of the meat we eat is fake meat. Um, it's reared in such a way that the animals themselves become uh, you know, very unfit and uh, are very overweight. I mean, for example, a chicken today has 23% of its body weight as fat. If you go back to the 1970s, it was only 7%. So whether it's red meat or white meat, I think the real issue is, is it fit meat? So if you could eat a wild deer, you know, that's going to be very, very different to a, you know, a battery chicken. www.busybox.com